New at 11, new details about one of Miami's most notorious drug dealers, Griselda Blanco. She killed anyone who got in her way. She really enjoyed inflicting pain and death on people. For the first time, meet the man who took down the godmother of cocaine. Just this past Labor Day, 69-year-old Blanca was assassinated in a butcher shop in Colombia. She lived longer than anyone expected. She escaped jail sentences, the electric chair, and dozens of enemies eager to kill her. Tonight, retired DEA agent Robert Palumbo sits down with CBS4's David Sutta, giving chilling details about the hunt for one of Miami's deadliest criminals. It was 1985. Miami Vice's Crockett and Tubbs were rounding up drug dealers on television. Reality, though? We were out, outgunned by them, uh, outnumbered. Retired DEA agent Bob Palumbo had spent a career in New York. Suddenly, he was here on a task force waging war against a bloody drug trade. It was as though the cocaine distribution was a byproduct of the violence rather than vice versa. In the aftermath of a shooting at the Dayland Mall that left two dead, Palumbo had no idea it was linked to this woman, Griselda Blanco. Griselda never showed on the, the radar. Her name was, was uh, mentioned, but she was never physically seen by any of us. He had actually been chasing the ghost of Griselda for a decade from a drug case in New York. She vanished, and by sheer chance, he came across her in Miami. A tip came in while his partner was on duty. A Miami native uh, who was complaining that her daughter was dating this uh, Hispanic uh, lowlife, so to speak, obviously involved in some type of illegal activity and more than likely drugs. Palumbo soon realized he was on to one of Griselda Blanco's four sons. Uber Blanco lived the high life in Turnberry Isle. With the help of a Colombian turned informant, Palumbo got close to Blanco's children. They were moving tremendous amounts of uh, cocaine, both on the West Coast in California, as well as Miami. And then came a huge break. Out of the blue, the informant gets a call, and lo and behold, it's Griselda. He had the informant set up a meeting in California where she was. Palumbo remembers the first time he saw her entering the Newport Beach Marriott lobby. And we just looked at each other and it was, this is it, it's her. They didn't move in. Instead, the operation lasted over a year. They moved millions of dollars for her. They tracked her violent orders. No one knows exactly how many her henchmen killed, just that it was more than serial killers Jeffrey Dahmer and Ted Bundy combined. Conservatively, I would say anywhere between 75 and 100. Just as the case was about to close, Griselda disappeared. Palumbo's world was collapsing. Is this ever going to end? So it, it, one day I just blurted out, I said, if, if, we, if we ever catch her, I'm going to give her a kiss of death because she's driving me crazy. He hatched a plan zeroing in on Blanco's weakness, her sons. With some luck, Palumbo tracked down one of them and then bodyguards to Griselda's home. It, it worked like a charm. Early on February 17, 1985, Palumbo finally moved in. And she was in bed, propped up, reading the Bible. She looked up at first in a bit of a shock. He leaned in and said, Griselda, we finally meet. She had no clue who he was. He then delivered on his promise. I just went over and gave her a kiss on the cheek. She was bewildered. She had no idea why I did it. He was relieved to close his case, but still had no idea how big it really was until... The fact that the homicide rate dropped dramatically after she was arrested. Blanco would be sentenced to 15 years in prison on drug trafficking charges. After just 10 years, though, she was released. By then, Miami-Dade had three murder cases against her. Griselda appeared headed for the electric chair when the prosecution became caught up in a sex scandal with a key witness. It ended with a plea deal. She served just seven years. But we felt betrayed by the system. 2004, Griselda is deported back to Colombia. Four weeks ago, her luck ran out. An assassin on a motorcycle pulled up, shooting her twice in the head. Palumbo calls it poetic justice. It's a closing chapter. I don't wish death on anybody, but if anybody uh, deserved the ultimate punishment, it was her. 
Bob Palumbo now works as a consultant. As for Blanco, she was buried earlier this month in the same cemetery as notorious drug trafficker Pablo Escobar. It appears she was out of the drug trafficking business. I'm David Sutta, CBS 4 News. A dark side of South Florida history. One of the first stories I covered as a reporter was the shootings at the uh, Dayland Mall back in 1979, which she ordered. Very ruthless woman. Apparently, she's accused also yeah. of killing her three husbands as well. Wow. Yeah. All right. Well